Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder, chief analyst of wikibon.org. Our next guest, Colin Mahoney, general manager of the software group for Big Data. Colin, welcome back to theCUBE again. Yeah, Great to see you. you. Yeah, it's terrific to be here as always. Last time we saw you was at the Big Data SV event we had, uh, talking about the map, our relationship you guys had, and just overall the success of HP Vertica. Developer conference last year was a notable highlight from your uh, success. Um, give us the update, what's happening for you guys here? You got the main stage here uh, at HP Discover, showcasing all your stuff, what's the big news? Yeah, so lots going on. Big news, uh, we announced Dragline, our, our next product release with uh, some great features as always. Every one of the Vertica releases, we, we strike a balance between uh, new innovation as well as performance gains, et cetera. Uh, this one, a uh, couple really cool things, uh, most notably inside it, we're introducing parts of what we call Project Maverick, which is our in-memory uh, capability. We can also do live aggregation, so if you're doing very quick lookups, uh, if you're a telecommunications company and you want to have your customers check their balance, uh, we can handle that type of workload now. Uh, we continue to do a lot more with Hadoop and the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, we now uh, support running Vertica on top of uh, on top of Hadoop. Obviously, we made the announcement that you referred to with uh, with MapR previously, but we'll be able to do that with uh, with all the distributions. So we continue to uh, do a lot there and just generally add to the to the platform around the whole mission of store, explore, serve information out. You know, one of the things that's been really interesting to watch you guys come into HP since you guys were acquired as a startup is the a lot of evolution around Haven, the success around the developer focus around some of your customers using the product, very big names. Um, so give us the update. What's happened between last year and this year? Are you seeing autonomy sprinkled in throughout? A lot of the big data solutions. Um, Vertica, are you guys in the same boat? Getting integrated in across the division. What's, what's different this year for you? Yeah, so I think the things that, that are different uh, this year versus last year. Last year we announced Haven, and, and it, was, it was here that we made that public. And what we've been working on is more tightly coupling the engine so that there's better integration, so that you can load information from one of the engines into the other, vice versa, also so that you can query across some of the engines. So we continue to add a lot of innovation um, in that area. And then of course, the N in Haven is the N applications on top. So you can see being showcased the digital marketing hub solution that we have here, the operations analytics solution that we have here, service anywhere that we have here. There's a number of different solutions on top of the platform, if you will, that are being built. Uh, there are also things like idle on demand now, uh, where you can actually uh, leverage this from a hosted perspective, parts of uh, the idle platform. So there really has been a lot of progress in, in the year that we've had it. And, um, and lots of partners standing up behind it too. We've announced over 100 partners uh, who are part of the, the whole Haven ecosystem right now. You guys, uh, Vertica specifically, is a bridge, as I see it, a bridge between the old and the new. Um, you're not traditional enterprise data warehouse, and you're not pure play Hadoop, yep. right? We just did a survey uh, in the Wikibon community about 300 practitioners. Now we biased the survey a little bit. They had to have knowledge of analytics and big data. And the question was, had your organization shifted any workloads from a traditional data warehouse, like Teradata, Oracle, or a mainframe to Hadoop. 61% said yes, we've already done that, and 34% said no, but we're going to do it within the next six months, so yep. by this year. That's 95% said so we're taking resources away from the old, bringing it to the new. So where are you in that transition? You're in the, right in the middle of it, so you must be seeing all that action going from right to left, to we left are, to right. Uh, yeah, so I think we're in a great spot because what happens is people want to move those workloads. So you might move the information to Hadoop, but you don't want to give up the, the SQL or the analytic capabilities or the performance that you might have associated with your traditional enterprise data warehouse solution. Or you want to augment it with a bunch of new data, log data, sensor data, 
other types of uh, clickstream data that is just too expensive to put in the traditional data warehouse. I think that bridge that you're talking about with Vertica is we bring sort of the, the best of the old world, namely SQL, the ecosystem, the BI ecosystem that still works with the products, uh, but we also address the things that didn't work in the old world, uh, the performance, the scale, at a much better price uh, performance ratio. So I think that's where we are a great bridge between the two uh, worlds. And it's an exciting time. I think so many customers are just tired of paying the maintenance fees to the traditional dinosaurs. And they're looking for something new. But they're also looking to do uh, workloads that they've never been able to achieve before. Have more people accessing information, ask more questions, get faster answers. And so uh, we are in the middle of that with FlexZone that we introduced in our version 7. You don't even have to define a, a schema like a normal database. You right. can just load your data in, and that helps that bridge as well. So those numbers don't surprise you then? They don't surprise and, me at all. And, and, but it's different than a lot of the marketing that you hear, particularly, well, certainly from the traditional data warehouse vendors, but also the Duke Pure Plays that are trying to placate their partners that are traditional data warehousing vendors. Now, you don't have a problem placating Oracle and Teradata. So, <laughs> yeah, well. So, and, you know, so what do you th what do you think about that? Well, I, I think I mean one one thing about the numbers too is that um, you know have you shifted any workload? And I think there are plenty of workloads that are are shifted. The question now I think people are asking is what exactly is that workload that you can do on Hadoop versus what you could do before? And that's I think where our value really comes in because we can actually show that we can deliver those same applications. Uh, at that price performance. So I think a lot of people are moving data over to Hadoop from traditional platforms. A lot of new data is coming into Hadoop, but now what are you going to do with that information and how can you leverage it? Uh, but we're happy. I mean, we're being right in the middle. We're happy to do both. We love Hadoop. We coexist with it. It's the H in Haven. Uh, and, and we're happy to take some of those traditional dinosaur workloads off the dinosaurs and help our customers out. Is, is that, yeah, you just said it, I was going to ask, is the traditional EDW a dinosaur? I think the traditional EDW, um, in a bloated sense, the economics just don't work for customers anymore. And the, the, the speed doesn't work for customers anymore. Having this you know, batch process where you have all the time in the world to get the data together, it just doesn't, it's not the reality now. So when you look at how expensive those systems were, when you look at the rigidity of those systems, they just don't make a lot of sense. I don't think companies, though, are going to rip them out of the core. If you have something, you've got some great data models, you run a business with it, you're not just going to rip it out. What you will do is look at the periphery and the edges and say, well, it makes no sense for me to spend all this money over here or over here for that workload. I'm going to move that off. Or this new workload, I'm going to put it on this new system. And I think over time, what you see is the edge is being eaten around these dinosaurs, and ultimately... Once the edge is where all the value becomes, right? Well, the edge is where the value <laughs> We've becomes. We've seen that story before. And then it just moves away. How well do skill sets at the customers translate from that traditional world to the new world? Well, that's, that's, a, so that's one great question. As much as I love Hadoop, Hadoop is Java, and it's really, it's been built for programmers. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of initiatives now to add SQL on top, including our initiatives. Um, but so many people have, you know, like it or not, SQL has become a very standard language for the BI tools in the ecosystem. For, so translating those skills that people already had before into this new world, you've got to be able to use those same tools. And we do that very well. Hadoop is getting there. It's not there yet. Um, so I think the skills actually translate very well. And a lot of the traditional enterprise data warehouse experts and people that are working on these systems, they also bring a structure, no pun intended, if you will, to how businesses need to operationalize the data, which is a critical component of any type of information analytics. So when we first met, you you gave me sort of a good education on the whole big data and the Duke marketplace, and, and um, you know a lot about this space. So I want to ask you what your thoughts are on a lot of the recent moves in the chessboard. Um, you're seeing Intel sort of Jettison its distribution, which we were always sort of questioning what they were doing there anyway. Maybe it was negotiating leverage. Who knows? It's, you know, Intel just putting its foot in the water, spending a few bucks to learn. But you're seeing massive investments in cloud era. Um, you know, Hortonworks was mopping up a lot of the partnerships, responding with, hey, cash is not a strategy. Is this all goodness at the end of the day? It was great for media. <laughs> is it good for the industry and the customer, these, it, it, because investments, or is it a distraction? 
I think overall, I think for customers, it, it is a very good thing. I, I think uh, you always want to have choice, and there's certainly choice in the market, but you also want the backing um, of that ecosystem to build around it and create some standards. Um, you want it to evolve, you want people to build up a lot of new tools on top, and, and that's happening now. So I think in general, it's, it's a very good thing. I think it's a natural progression of any industry. Uh, there's some consolidation that happens, there's investment that happens, and I think one thing that all vendors, uh, especially HP, realize is that Hadoop and its ability as a distributed file system to have video and audio and uh, text or structured data, it is a great catch-all place to do that. So any vendors looking at the workloads that are running Hadoop and saying more and more of the data center is going to be running that type of workload and it's therefore important. So uh, Meg mentions Vertica, mentioned Vertica in the last call, maybe the last couple of calls as a growth area. Um, you know, along with a couple other areas that were growing uh, within HP. HP is not a growth story, we all know that, but there are pockets of growth um, that, that are highlighted, you're, you're one of them. What's pumping up that, that momentum? Uh, is it that you've, I mean, you've done personally a, a much better job of integrating Vertica into the HP you know, system? Um, there's maybe the demand side, it's a big market. What's driving that growth? I think what's driving the growth is uh, there, there's a perfect storm right now that is big data in my mind, which is massive amounts of information. Unlike, say, business intelligence and analytics 10, 20 years ago, where you had to take a small sample size and extrapolate what you think happened, now you can literally look at exactly what happened. We have logs of it. Companies are realizing that in that black sand, there's gold and companies that differentiate themselves with data, that compete with data, uh, they win. They dramatically outperform their peers. And so, return on investment dollars in big data projects is very high. I mean, people talk about 10, 12x, uh, 12 to one returns on these types of projects. So people want to spend. Uh, there's definitely a shortage in the number of people that know how to do this, and so they're turning to companies like HP that can come with a full solution from hardware to software to services. And I think that really is driving a lot of our growth. Yeah, I was just, we asked questions about that. Uh, I, was, I was, again, impressed with the percentage of customers that said, yeah, the project's really paying off in, in a big way. I mean, it was a, just an overwhelming percentage. And that wasn't the case a year ago. No, I think a year ago, five years, 10 years ago, typically an enterprise data warehouse project would take uh, 18 to 24 months, if you were lucky, to deploy, and it wouldn't even be clear at the end of that time frame whether it was a success. And what's different now is that you can very quickly get something spun up and show value. It doesn't have to be boil the ocean, everything in the kitchen sink, but you can show that value and then double down and start investing progressively and leveraging, and many times, the same data for different types of modernizations across the enterprise. I wonder if you could talk about uh, HP's software strategy specific to big data. So I know you don't run the software group, but right. you're a key part of it. But so as it relates to big data and analytics, um, Hadoop, what's the, how would you summarize the, the strategy? Yeah, well, and I certainly don't want to steal uh, Robert's thunder this afternoon, but I, what I would say, and I think you know, you'll hear a lot of this, is big data really permeates everything that we do in HP software whether it's on the, the systems and operations management side, you're getting a lot of log data. Uh, autonomy, of course, with the human information, compliance, e-discovery, uh, digital marketing, Vertica, obviously, with uh, the analytic uh, warehouse that we have, uh, security, right? You can't talk about security without massive volumes of, of data coming through. And then on the application development side, uh, lifecycle management side, it's also all information. Data is changing the way we write applications. Applications are phoning home. Applications are telling us how they're running. They're kicking off health data about what's actually going on in an application. All of these are leaving that digital fingerprint, if you will, that is data. And I think that's creating and driving a lot of what we're now hearing about and reading about and seeing in practice around big data. So I would say that there is no software business that is not being driven by data today. It is just permeating everything we do, and it really is the software that is the difference between data being data, and that black sand, and data being gold. Software is what makes it gold. 
Colin, I got to ask you about the Internet of Things. Obviously, that's hot right yeah. now. Internet of Everything, whatever you want to call it, whatever buzzword you use. In the news today, Google's purchasing a satellite maker for five hundred million dollars. Um, everything's connected. The enterprises are looking certainly at this component of sensors or whatever's on the edge of the network. What are you seeing for um, architecturally with your customers around how they're handling that tsunami of data? If you think about things like satellites, you think about things like devices that, that enterprises are bolting on, it could be machinery, it could be manufacturing, um, retail, on and on and on. <laughs> they got to put it, the data somewhere. What's they your do. take on that? Yeah, so, so I think the Internet of Things is, is a great opportunity for all of us. I think having IP addresses on all sorts of devices kicks off that log data. And I think the challenge that companies are facing right now is where to put all that information? How do we ingest, as you said, John, the tsunami of data? And then more importantly, how do we correlate that with the rest of our business to figure out why does this matter? Should I keep this data around? Um, we have a, a large uh, cable company here in the United States that basically took the data exhaust, the log data, SNMP data, and they used it for predictive network capabilities in terms of where they should expand their CapEx. Um, they ended up saving over $300 million in CapEx, and they increased the service levels for their customers. That was all based on sensor data, log data of how their end users with the set-top boxes are turning on their TVs, watching different shows, when they watch them. So if you can harness that information, you can really use it to drive substantial either revenue opportunity by cross-selling somewhere or cost savings, as was the case in that example. So I think we are just at the tip of the iceberg on the Internet of Things. Everything is going to have an IP address. Uh, everything is going to be able to collect data and send it back. The question is, where are you storing it? How are you securing it? How are you actually helping people understand the meaning of this data? Because oftentimes, you know, Robert Youngjohns was joking yesterday, if you try to open up that log data, first of all, you're not going to open it up in Microsoft Word. <laughs> you're going to get a bunch of text that, you know, you're not going to know what it means. So how do you really understand what it means? How do you parse out the key aspects of those logs? And every log might be different. There's no standard for a log. So I think it's just all the issues that folks have been dealing with on the traditional enterprise data warehouse side, magnify them out uh, by volume and variety, and that's what the Internet of Things is. Yeah, certainly, if you look at all the growth cycles and every emerging great innovation boom, you see you know, automation with a tipping point kind of comes over. You see manual processes, you see you know, people brute forcing things, and at some point there's a tipping point. With big data, we're seeing it with rolling up for analytics, whether it's using SQL, that's been the gateway drug for the enterprise users. Certainly the tsunami of unstructured data doesn't have transactional elements to it, storage. Um, so what's the next thing from your standpoint for you guys to take that next level to bring big data to the modern era, that next level of modern, modern capability? Is it automation? Is it development friendly? all the above, what's your take on I think on it's that? all the above. I think from a developer standpoint, you've got to make it developer friendly. You've got to make it so developers can build their applications and, and have a service to the information to do anything they want with it. They might want to do deep data science work. They might want to do simple reporting. They might want to do simple storage and aggregations. They might want to do the live aggregates that I talked about with Maverick. But you've got to make that layer a given. And then I also think, for, for the lines of business, you have to create solutions. You have to package up some of the math and some of the IP so that you don't have to hire a bunch of PhDs in your organization. You can just look at what the data is telling you. And the analogy I always give is GPS systems. There's a lot of data going on in those systems, but ultimately you care about it getting you to the right place and knowing what your estimated time of arrival is. And I think with everything data related, that's what organizations are trying to figure out. But we're doing, our job in making it easy to explore, discover insights, and then once you discover it, operationalizes so the organization can actually monitor and measure against that information. Colin Mahoney, great to have you on theCUBE. I'll give you the great final you. word. Share with the folks Thank out you. there why this HP Discover is so important. What's the big uh, important thread here for this event? Well, from my perspective, uh, you know, it is about mobility, it is about the cloud, it is, it, it is about big data, it's about security. What I love about HP Discover, um, especially here in Las Vegas, is there are very few companies where you can go from, say, a printer 
all, and by the way, printers are massively important in big data. <laughs> uh, but there's, there are very few places where you can go from the printer to the PC, to the servers, to the storage, to the software, and, and see how it all fits together. And what's great is you walk around here, and so many of the demos that you're seeing tie all those things together. And I think what's great this year about Discover is last year we were talking about a lot of these things. We announced Haven. This year you can walk around and you can see how they're stitched together. You can see how that information is collected from servers on a phone home, operationalized in the dashboard so that you can act on it. And more so than ever, I think you can really see that one HP come together where across the full stack of services, hardware, and software, you can see it. Big data is at the heart of the value proposition, connecting with the infrastructure, making sense of instrumenting the business. This is theCUBE, extracting that signal, sharing that big data with you. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.